Don't y'all shut the fuck up? <laughs> and I want you to sing this song wherever you go to anybody you see. I don't care who you are or where you work. Get your ass out and vote. This ain't the election to sit home and lurk. Get your ass out and vote. Get your ass out and vote. Get your ass out and vote. Everybody, get your ass out and vote. All right, shut the fuck up. You sound horrible. All right, now, after that, I'm going to need a refreshing beverage. <laughs> Could somebody please bring me a beer? Just one beer. Thank you, baby. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. It's too early to drink. I think I need a Coca-Cola. If y'all don't get this fucking joke, I'll kill you. I'll, fuck, I'll kill you all. Thank you, baby. Oh, wait a minute. Come back, honey. There's something. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait a minute. Hold on. I couldn't even get through this last night <laughs> when I made this shit up. Hold on. Wait a minute. There's something on this Coke can. It, wait a minute. It might be mine. I don't... No. I, no. No. No, you take that, take that back to my friend Clarence at table 33. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am so honored to be with you this morning. Now, I usually don't do mornings, but for you, powerful people, I made an exception. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be very honest with you. I am exhausted. I got a lot of calls this morning. One from my dear friend, girlfriend, Melania Trump. She called me around 5 o'clock, totally forgetting it was West Coast time. I said, hello, Melania from Slavonia. How you doing, baby girl? <laughs> she said, Jennifer. I am the most bullied person on the world. I said, well, I'm the biggest hoe in the world. What's the problem? I said, sweetie, I'm so sorry. The only way we're going to get that bullying away from you, put him on the phone. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, no, fuck you. It's all right. And then Lindsey Graham called, yes, and said he was a single white man and he would not be silenced. I said, oh, baby boy, I feel your pain. And as a single black woman, shut the fuck up! He hung up. The third call came from Kanye West. <laughs> I hung up. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are here to honor some very powerful people today. And I want to thank Variety for asking me to host the annual Power of Women's Luncheon. Our honorees today are 18-year-old Emma Gonzalez. <laughs> Emma is here to represent March for Our Lives and to advocate for gun control across America. Let me say on a personal note, I am so proud of you. 
I really, truly am. I actually spoke with some of the kids at Parkland and um, some of the African-American children. They said they were feeling ignored. And they said, George Clooney came down here and went to, to, to dinner with some of the white kids. And then I said, well, Jennifer Lewis is here, God damn it, and we're going to McDonald's. We also honoring the very funny Tiffany Haddish. Who actually believes herself to be funnier than I am. This bitch. Yeah, bitch, but you believed it. This bitch. <laughs> She is funnier than I am. <laughs> Tiffany's here to support the Unusual Suspects Theater Group. Yes. And the incredible Regina King. Where are you? Mm-hmm. Three-time Emmy Award winner, one of which she stole from me. God bless her. She will be speaking on behalf of the I Have a Dream Foundation. We have the very ta uh, talented Natalie Portman representing Time's Up. Where are you, darling? Somewhere lurking. You over there? Uh, sweetie, I was flying back from St. Louis last night and I knew I was gonna see you today, so I watched Annihilation. You were wonderful in it. That movie scared the shit out of me. I jumped at one point and hit an old white man. I knew he was a Trump voter. I said, oh baby, I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I was so sorry. I said, it's Natalie as a mutant. <laughs> Lastly, we have Lena Waithe, the producer. <laughs> producer, writer, and actress. Now, Lena does it all. She's working with the Trevor Project and supporting the LGBTQ Youth of America. <laughs> now, what you don't know is I put diapers on Lena. I did, taught her everything she knows. You'd think that bitch would call me. I got Melania Lindsay Graham. I just saw somebody look at somebody else because I said the word bitch. Get over it, bitch. <laughs> I'm Jennifer Lewis. Don't ask me to come in here this fucking early and not cuss. <laughs> in addition, we will be honoring Kavita Shukla with this year's Moroccan Oil Inspiration to Action Award. We're also honoring the CEO of Participant Media, David Lindy, with the Empowerment Award for support of female filmmakers and executives in his company. Let me end by introducing you to two of the most powerful women in the world, Cardi B and Nicki Minaj, ladies and gentlemen. What, what, they're fighting? Okay, I'll, we'll get to them later. That came this morning in the shower. I actually sent a message to Nikki and Cardi after that incident. I did. This is a serious story. And I made it very funny. And I asked them to help me spread the quote to get out and vote and to use their platforms. And I'm really sincerely happy, happy to say that they did. Both of them posted that morning. And I want to say this before I introduce these two beautiful women. We as women do not apologize to Kavanaugh. Let that go on the record. I have bipolar disorder myself. 
I know what mania looks like. And I know that the man in the highest office and Kanye West and probably several others who surround him are mentally ill. It's time to stop joking. I'm out touring the country right now, my book tour. I went to Detroit, but I drove over to Flint. And Flint ain't fixed. So I went down to Fort Lauderdale and spoke with the kids at Parkland. I'm in the trenches, ladies and gentlemen, and I am unafraid. So, I want to dedicate this song to you, Emma, that I wrote the night of the massacre because I saw a video and you all were coming out of the school with your hands up. And it was a helicopter shot and there was one little boy who had his hands out like this Everybody else's hands were this, but his were like this. I knew he was in shock and could not get his hands above his head. I've had a knife to my throat. I know what shock is. I know when you can't move. And I wrote this that night. Our children shouldn't have to run from bullets. Our children shouldn't have to run from bullets. They should be somewhere having fun. They should never, ever even see a gun. America, shame. America. We gotta change.